Welcome to More Than A Few Words, a marketing conversation for business owners. This is your host, Lorraine Ball. And those of you who have been listening to me for a while know that, yeah, I'm an extrovert. I love people. I love being around people. I love talking to people. But I don't represent all of the world's population. There are a whole bunch of people out there that are introverts that really don't enjoy a lot of the communication styles that I do. Here's the trick. You've got to be able to reach both of those audiences. And if you're an introvert, you have to learn how to participate in the world. And so today I've invited Amanda Watts to join me. She's the award-winning founder of Oomph Global, embracing her hidden introvert strengths. She has served more than 700 clients in 23 countries, amassed a community of 25,000 followers, and written three best-selling books. Her mission is to educate other introverted professionals. You know who you are, accountants, business coaches, and consultants on how to do marketing and manage your energy so you can make more money with fewer clients. Amanda, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It is great to be here. It's so nice. And as we were starting the show before we went live we were talking about the fact that you're an introvert and I'm an extrovert how do you find that balance I think extroverts sometimes we're a little clueless because it's easier (laughs) for us so how do you recommend to your clients that they approach networking and building that community yeah absolutely so If I quickly dive in the difference between an extrovert and an introvert so that your listeners can kind of self-select how they are. But very quickly, an extrovert will wake up in the morning having had rest and they're kind of maybe a little low on energy. So an extrovert starts a day low on energy and every single interaction that they have with someone, they gain a coin. So uh, like you and I talking now, you'll be getting energy from that, okay? So you'll gain coins as your day goes by. And at the end of the day, let's say you have five gold coins. That means that when someone says to you, hey, let's go out partying, you're like, yay, let's go out partying because you've gained all these coins at the end of the day. An introvert is very, very different from that. And an introvert actually starts their day off with five coins. So they start with the most energy at the beginning of the day. And every single time they interact with someone, they lose a coin. So I've been interviewed for a podcast this morning. I had a meeting with my accountability team and I had a client call. So I'm pretty short on coins now. It's the end of the day for me and I end my day with zero coins and when someone says, hey, let's go partying, I go, no, it's okay, I'm going home to watch TV. And that's really the difference between an extrovert and an introvert. They either get energy or they lose energy from interacting with people and being out in the big bad world. Absolutely. And I know that about myself. And so as an extrovert, a day with no meetings and no calls. Mm -hmm. I'm flipping through my phone book, trying to figure out which of my friends I'm going to lunch with because, because I need that. Yeah. So what's really interesting on that is as an introvert, which is about 30 to 50% of the world, depending where of the world you are in Japan, you'll find more introverts than you will in the USA. Um, But uh, the great thing about that is for an introvert, if I spend a whole day on my own, Oh, it's amazing. I get so much work done. My strategies come out of my head and I get all that thinking time without the stress of having to interact with people. And that's kind of an introvert superpower is if you leave them alone, they thrive, absolutely thrive. That doesn't mean to say that we don't want to interact with people. We do like interacting with people. Uh, we get a lot of a lot of pleasure from it, but it also reduces our energy. So we have to manage our energy. Absolutely. So as an introvert, I need to market my business. I need to make sure that people know who I am and know Mm -hmm. what I do. What are some strategies that will allow me to do that, but won't leave me lying on the floor gasping for breath at the end of the day? 
Absolutely. So there's four different kinds of introverts, just to make life really difficult. Um, there's the thinking introvert, and they're the kind of people, I'm a thinking introvert, actually, who love strategy, who love going really, really deep on how they run their business. So a thinking introvert is really good to create a strong personal brand. And they can do this by being interviewed by others like I'm doing here. Um, they can do it by sharing insights through blogging or through doing video, because they're thinkers so they like to share what they've thought about um, the next kind of introvert is a restrained introvert and a restrained introvert is actually someone who takes a while to get going they really struggle with actually taking massive action so the best kind of thing that a restrained introvert can do is team up with a partner to help them get white papers out and help them finish the job that really really helps then the last two is social introvert. So a social introvert doesn't mind hanging out with a couple of people, but they do actually feel quite social. So I'm a little bit of a social introvert and I love showing up every day and saying hello to everyone. So the best thing to do with that is run webinars or record videos. And then you've got the final introvert is an anxious introvert. And an anxious introvert is what we tend to get labeled with. They're shy. They don't like networking, they don't like socializing, and they hate the, the focus being on them. So with an anxious introvert, we say to them, the kind of marketing they should be doing is all focused on their clients. So get testimonials. And actually, I know that you're an extrovert, but actually a really good job for an anxious introvert, a marketing strategy for an anxious, is to run a podcast and interview other people because they don't have the focus on them. They don't have to worry too much. So it works works really well. So they're kind of the four introverts and the different kinds of marketing each one can do. Wow. That actually makes so much sense. <laughs> so you you play to your strengths and yeah. you find people that can fill in some of those blind spots and yeah. accept that you don't have to do everything just yeah. because your extrovert friends are running around chairing committees and being president yeah. of networking events doesn't yeah. mean you need to do that. And it's a real journey because I, I exhibit quite a lot at events and I hate it. I have to tell you, I hate it. And last year I made the decision that I was going to stop exhibiting at events because there are other ways for me to build my audience. So I go to an event, I might get in front of 200 people if I'm lucky, if I if I get a speaking gig and I get to talk to people on the, on the um, stand, I might speak to 200 people. But actually that 200 people might have cost me three or four thousand dollars or three or four thousand pounds. And I could spend that on Facebook advertising where I don't have to talk to anybody and get clients from it and move the customer journey quicker. So it's about being super savvy with the kind of marketing you're doing that is aligned with your personality. Um, and maybe someone like you would love being at an event for three days talking to people. And that is a good investment for you because it's aligned with your personality. But when I work with my clients, I'm like, who are you? What works for you? How can we leverage that rather than you must do this, which is what a lot of marketers say, you must do it this way. But that doesn't work for everybody. It really makes people struggle. And you know, the, the truth is, when I go to a networking event or a conference, and I'm having fun, because I'm talking to people, and it's it's great. But I can look around the room, and I can see the people that are not enjoying it. Mm. And mm. You know, I may go over and chat with them and, and try to bring them out. But if you don't enjoy it, it's really hard. You know, you're talking about energy points. I think that has to be so draining yeah, because I know exactly. when I'm forced, I have a whole day of working on something. Oh, my God, I I, I lose energy just sitting down. Yeah. So I can imagine it works the same in reverse. A hundred percent. So yeah, going networking for someone who is an introvert and finds 
uh, talking to 10 different people in an hour, the most draining thing in the world, tends to mean that our faces start to look painful. So we're at a networking event, our face starts to look painful, then people are like, oh, why are you being off? Are you, you know, they, they think that we're either shy or snobby, and they start to label us. And actually, we're just really freaking uncomfortable. And we hate it. And it doesn't actually do us any favors. We've got to find different ways to be out there. Now, some introverts don't mind networking. I'm not saying it's not everybody, but the majority of us would much rather sit in our house and do this. This is much easier than having to go out networking, get on a train, go and talk to people with a big smile on our face and run out of energy, you know? So yeah, it does us a disservice when we try and do things that are outside of our comfort zone in that way. Yeah, it that makes so much sense. And I, I know when I was running the agency and I could divide the the team into the extroverts and the introverts. And I'm like, you go to this big networking event. And a lot of my introverts, I still wanted them to get out there. But what we did is we worked very hard to find smaller events, a little bit more structured where they knew, okay, I'm going to go in and I'm going to be at a table with so many people and I have to do these things and take away a lot of the unexpected. And it made it easier for them and again, they were playing to their strong suits. Yeah, brilliant. And another thing that they can do, so so when someone has got a team with introverts in them and they have to go networking, you can actually say to them, hey, see if you can find out who's going to be there, connect with them on LinkedIn beforehand and build a relationship before you get there. Then you don't have the small talk. It makes it much, much easier. Absolutely. Go go with a friend and yeah. don't... And do the divide and conquer. Talk for a little bit, go away, and then come back and introduce each other to the people you've met. Perfect. See, you know what to do. You've got (laughs) it. You know how to manage us introverts and make sure we're our best when we're out representing a business. (laughs) You know, and that's that's the truth, whether you're a manager or whether you're doing this for yourself, recognizing that everybody does it a little differently. Yeah. And that's the power. And I think it's sad that us marketers have got a bit of a bad reputation because not everybody recognizes that. And you can't force a square peg into a round hole. There's nothing that we can do. We just cry. We just get burnt out. We fall out of love of our business. And actually what we really need to do is play to our strengths and don't worry about the rest of it. Get support with the rest of it. Absolutely. Well, Amanda, this has been awesome. And I am going to encourage um, anyone, if you're listening, if you are an introvert, if you're looking for additional information, um, check out amandawatts.com. I'm going to have a link to her um, Get Paid Your Worth, Nine Rules for Attracting High Value Clients as an Introverted Business Owner. Thank you. That's awesome. Thanks for having me. It's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. And if you've enjoyed today's conversation and are looking for other resources for your business, be sure to check out our digital toolbox. Look for MTFW wherever you listen to podcasts. Listen to two episodes. They're short. This has been another episode of More Than A Few Words. Thanks for listening.